So my presentation today is Cameroon. I like to talk about the people. So Cameroon is vast, it's big, it's a country in the West Coast Africa. So as kind of stick in people, even in people, I have to go a little bit more in detail because then the time we have will not be enough to talk about that country that's very diverse, not only in the geographical way, climatically, and then of course the people. So here is, so we can see the, 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 the picture uh, at the, the center we show uh, mostly in our traditional dance, we wear some kind of costume. And this one is one of those costume with a Cameroon totem, which is a lion. So we could go next, Patricia. Of course. Okay, during this presentation, I would like to get my audience to know about where Cameroon come from, and then we could, we're going to have a little bit of a view of the climate and the vegetation, the population, and of course I will be able to show just a little a glimpse of the, uh, the, the where the, the indigenous population in Cameroon lives. So to do a little taste of what it is uh, without going so deep because then we don't have that time for. For sure. So where is Cameroon come from? Where is that word, where does that come from? So uh, uh, in the year, uh, one one four zero zero that year in Europe there was that movement of uh, people trying to navigate throughout the country uh, throughout the world where uh, uh, India Africa were new uh, environment for them so they make what they call discovery but those people were already living in those area but for Europe it was a discovery because wow we've never seen those type of people what is this area where I'm moving my ship and get there so then Fernando Paul was a Portuguese navigator what he did is that he found in that uh, uh, Vuri Vuri is a river, the main river in Cameroon that's uh, um, uh, uh, close to the ocean, ocean Atlantic, that's where actually it drains. And then he's like, oh, why is that? I'm finding a lot of shrimps in this area. That's terrible. I've never seen that many at once. So of course, it's the area where shrimps we didn't know what shrimps was in that area is mostly like fish or uh, anything that you could get from the bush um, a forest so shrimps they were there they could multiply as much as possible because no one was interested to take them so he was like okay i do know this what is that it's a lot and then he decided to to, to, to give it a name. So, okay, let me give the name to that area. It would be Rio dos Camaros, which is a Portuguese word to say, the river of shrimps. And then with the, the, the continuation of the navigation, the uh, German people came back and changed that Camaros to Cameroon, which German in Cameroon, Cameroon is written with the K. Um, then with the time after German lost the war wars first, uh, Cameroon got, it, it, it went into protector of Germany. Then, then uh, German lost the war and, and Britain and France took over Cameroon and everybody changed it to call it the way they find it was sound easier for their language. So in Cameroon, that we have two official languages, which is the French and the English, and of course, indigenous languages about 260. So the next slide. So here is uh, something that's showing uh, the Camer Cameroon uh, Cam The top node, that one that's on top, that's blue, like a hat, that area just way below the blue hat is the desert. 
very very uh, dry, uh, sandy, and then as like we're moving down, it become a little bit greener to be in a rainforest down in the green zone at the bottom. So then from that we have the whole diversity in uh, savanna, grassland, mangrove, and so forth, uh, up to the swamp water area by the uh, ocean Atlantic. Okay. So now in Cameroon, the population in Cameroon is uh, 22 million, a, bit, a little bit over 22 million. That was the statistic in 2014, uh, 15. So in that we could see the green zone is the zone where we have higher density in terms of population. The higher density, that's mean how many kids, how many people we find in a quadrant kilometer. So, and then we can see how we have that little area on the top uh, neck upstairs where we have a more dense people. And at the corner here at the, I call it the tail, there is also a high density of people too in that area. Even though uh, the population sitting in that area are very small in terms of surface, they make more kids in those areas. Uh, those are the areas where polygamy is, okay? That's good to go, that's a politic because uh, each, uh, a man have having uh, the, the right to have four, five, six. The other guy I put in the picture has 100. Uh, women uh, for himself. So with that, he has 500 kids. That's one of the king in the West. That's made that, that coast where the little tail. So he has at least 300 kids by himself. So with that, ma uh, that mass, we get uh, to get that so the, um, population density in those areas more elevated. So yeah, then we start to get to business. So how did we go from Cameroon to uh, to the for capital from Canada to Cameroon? I mean, from Ottawa to Yaounde, Yaounde, which is uh, the capital of Cameroon. How do we go from there? How long it take us to get there? About ten thousand kilometer, about almost six thousand miles to get there. And then uh, if you have to fly, get about 21 hours to get to Cameroon from Ottawa to Yaoundé. Then from that, we're just gonna dive in straight into Cameroon with its population and its tribe and then major city. So in the Northern, in Cameroon, it has a, uh, 10 provinces, the, the North, Fat North, the North, the Adamawa, East, South, uh, Center, West, South, and North, West, and Littoral. And so those 10 provinces, they have the major center city, which the capital, for the entire country is uh, Yaounde in the center. So we have about 80 some tribes. I would say for even more for each language, we may have one tribe per language, but we have major ones. Uh, in the northern, we have the Fulani. Fulani is, a, if we translate that language, it means people with sl who are slender. So it's small, they call it, if we go word per word, it says small skin. We, we have, we in the country, just to go to the background where they talk, they say small skin, we skinny people, because uh, Cameroon is one of those countries where the, Ideal women or uh, the women with more uh, power is the one that has a little bit of the wood that's around, around this, that they call it in Cameroon, that has a little bit of the meat. So when you're skinny, the, <laughs> why are you so skinny? So you're not important, you're not very um, privileged type if you don't have that extra uh, meat, they said. 
So Flanny, uh, the group of people, they migrate a lot. They don't really have like a fixed place to stay. They migrate around country, uh, Cameroon at, on top of their chart or Nigeria. So, and then we also have the, the Kirdi, we are the people in the blue, uh, the Adamawa people, yes, that one. So those are in Adamawa. Those are the, the people who um, they, they also migrate to be able in this area. They migrate a lot and then you can find them here is the Nigeria. So then we have the pygmy. So here I wrote it in Francais. It's actually P-Y-G-M-Y, which is uh, the pig pygmy, those are the very deep indigenous uh, uh, be like the one we have, uh, I think, uh, in, uh, in uh, close to Australia, where they really live by the nature. They don't wear clothes, they use the nature, what the main mother nature gave them to, to, to build up their clothing. Uh, so they easily could be out there with just a t-shirt. So we find a lot here, the rainforest around there. So they build their house with the material they get from the forest. So and then we have the Petit, the Betty are the people. Here you find them here in the in the yellow, which is Ebolova, and then you could find them in the in the south. Um, uh, in the center as well, as a little bit here, uh, a little bit kind of close of the Litoa. Those are the people in power now uh, in, in Cameroon in, or most uh, country in Africa, the person in power gonna privilege is ethnic more than other ethnic. So they, uh, they are in power at this time. They have been in power for a very long time. So Douala is the area where, navigate, where navigator went through because here is the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So they, when the, 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 the explorator came in, they went through Douala to enter the center and walk through the Vuri to be able to get into uh, inside the country. So they got closer, uh, a longer contact with uh, uh, diversity. So they recognize what is new, what is uh, okay, the trend, and the way they, uh, they, the, that collaboration, that uh, contact with Western culture kind of affect their own culture too. We can see in the picture there that I will post later on how that had made their own culture to evolve. Okay, so then we have the Bamile K over here in the center and a little bit of the those ones over here, which is the area where I came from. That's a center bush in the green zone where we climb any type of tree we could to get mango up there or avocado up there, those trees, and then giant tree. There was also a rainforest in those area as well. Green, I had no idea what mean water. That's why I had to learn swimming just way after I was all like this because I never seen water. I saw mostly trees. So climbing trees was uh, uh, one of our specialty in that area. So we could go next. So now we go down to those tribe. So, and just what are they doing and their habitat, where they're living, the little tiny bit of their living. This one is one of the traditional custom. So traditional custom being also mostly used when there is situation, like perhaps marriage, perhaps somebody uh, gave birth, uh, a funeral, so then there is, depending on the situation, a particular clothing to put on. So the flanny here uh, in one of those uh, ceremonies, this one looks like perhaps a wedding or something. So, and then what they're doing, they all migrate a lot and they have their animals, they move with them. And this one is a little bit more stable as a population because of the type of the housing they have on. The uh, houses the, here is built with the blocks and the blocks are just um, uh, earth that they dig and then they put in a little machine, compress it and build their house with it. 
And then those roof exact, that's a Kilde, similar family. So the, mm -hmm. the, the roof here is made of palm leaves. So the palm leaves that they lay a certain way so that when it's rain, the water is collected. Inside is nice and dry, but the water is collected out there. How did they lay the leaves? I don't know. I would not be able to lay even like one. So there's like one piece at a time to be able to cover the entire roof. So, and then of course, most of the time, uh, you could see there's no fence over there at all. So everybody is sitting everywhere. There's always the social and the family part of it is always high because everybody's around everybody. Kids grow very fast, independent, very fast. She, you could see that girl, she ties something else. She's probably carrying a baby. So instead of carrying the, to carry the baby at the front, she may carry her younger brother but in the back where they tie the stuff and the baby is sitting inside like the kangaroo does but just the opposite in the back so here is the guy um, that has uh, 100 wives so he never get out on his own he's always pick one or two or three or four women that he to to be he always has around him at least two women uh, to if he's going for an invitation or if the people of his tribe, the one who have lived the little tiny village to be in a bigger city, if they invite him, he never gonna go by himself. He's always have two, three, four wives with him. So those girls, those two ones are the two wives he picks this time to go with in that particular situation. I think here he was getting ready to go in England or something like that. So he had 300 kids and then 100 wives. And you could see the, the, for that picture again, Patricia. So yes, you could see depending on how the vegetation is going that you could see more houses with more wooding because in this area, they have more trees and giant trees that they could use to build their house uh, differently. And then the, the clothing, the clothing of yes, of the kin is made from scratch by from from scratch. Even the little string, the fabric, everything is made from scratch from trees. Sometimes they use bamboo, sometimes they use cotton. They made it from scratch. On. And then here's the Sawa, the Dwala people. That's the population that received diversity before everybody else. That's through that part of the country where the name came from, the Vuri, the river that uh, Fernando Po used uh, to where he found the shrimps was in this area. So they have that contact with uh, developed country before everybody else in Cameroon. So they their culture is a little bit more influenced by the diversity in terms of, you can see the way they dress, clean, very clean, uh, very organized. And then uh, even they kind of adapt, they put a little bit of adaptation there with the bottom one. If not, the top one is completely uh, something borrowed. With, with the new culture that came in and, and influenced their culture. And then the way they behave, the way they do their thing has that influence as well. The way they build their house has that influence as well. And then here is the, the, the uh, picture of the uh, ethnic in power at this time. So here is one of the funeral where somebody uh, where they they went when they finished um, the ceremony they completely with a dance and then those little wooden stuff uh, made specially with typical in it, a certain way that when they use those big stick it makes different kind of tone and then it helps play the music and somebody is standing somewhere and singing and all the one just perform So this population is uh, the group that we were talking about, the really typical indigenous population. 
they don't wear dress, they just get. We could see now with the new, because the country with UNESCO, UNESCO kind of stimulate to have to be able to include them. And then we have to be able to um, bring the culture over there. Uh, in terms of healthcare, uh, in terms of, and because they got their own medicine, they get their own anything, they give birth, they do their own thing by themselves. Like they have all those ability, but then at one point uh, there was the, the, the death, uh, the, the living life expectancy started dropping drastically it just have to be something new introduced in their system and they get sick so they started introducing a little bit more of going to school type uh health care hospital uh to them before that they were like this one this one uh picture on this picture here that's what's a, a one of the a navigator or colonizer that showed up there and then discovered them and was like, why are those people? They're not that tall. They're maximum five, uh, five eight. That's the maximum they get. That's really the tallest person. If not, they were really like a meter or four something. Uh, and and then they, they grow their own thing, they build their house with the nature. So here is a new a group that just installed, maybe somebody that just got married, because you get married, you have to leave your pants and you have to go somewhere and at one of corner of the bush to build up your, your little family there. So this one looks like a brand new uh, ca camp where uh, she just got married, the husband is maybe gone doing something in the bush hunting, they do hunting and fishing a lot. So, and then she's at home cooking some stuff. So they just started building their house. And then by the end with this one, they put a plantain, a lot of plantain leaves over, over it to cover that with the time they're gonna cover, it's gonna look similar to this one. So, and here is a YouTube video, hopefully it works. <laughs> so for the, their culture it's been a very, uh, um very fascinating for for the for that culture to uh to work with that everything is new everything is uh um you curious to see what they're doing uh it's been uh, a, a pleasure for us to to, to know some stuff we sometimes go there to learn some traditional medicine or uh, let's see You wouldn't do, huh? Is not. Not now. <laughs> we have of course, to I apologize. Technical things. So watch. Just looking at what I can remove. And oh, oops. Let's see if we remove the extra stuff. If it will work. I am so sorry. I don't know how to make it work. So what we could do is that do you share? Did you share with me? I let me see if I can. Hmm. Do you remember what the YouTube was called? Yeah. So it's just like I can't get into this now. So that's one. You just have to copy that link. Um, you wouldn't do that. Uh, I'll just do it the easy way. It's yeah, maybe we just do it over in this. Yeah. Uh, Aha. Yeah, it works. <laughs> developed a local musical tradition that differs radically from those of neighboring ethnic groups and can be found nowhere else on the African continent. Music and dance have long been inextricably linked to all social and cultural events within the Aka community. 
They form an integral part of Aka rituals, including ceremonies related to the inauguration of new encampments, hunting, assemblies of several encampments, and funerals. This extremely complex type of contrapuntal polyphonic singing is based on four voices. Unlike polyphonic systems that are written down using notation, the vocal tradition of the acapigmas allows for spontaneous expression and improvisation. The community has elaborated extremely complex musical forms. During performances, each singer can change his or her voice to produce a multitude of variations, creating the impression that the music is continuously evolving. The songs are generally accompanied by various percussion and string instruments, each one played for a specific occasion. Among the most commonly used handcrafted instruments are a local type of tom-tom in zeko, a harp-like instrument known as a gidala bagongo, and a single string bow, mbe. The songs perpetuate knowledge considered essential for the cohesion of the group and the preservation of community values. The dances are performed to the accompaniment of vibrant hand clapping. Depending on the ritual, some dances feature men only, while others may be executed by male and female couples, or in certain cases, by solo dancers. The first participants to come on stage are the Grand Ladies, a title borne by mothers, since it is they who have always had primary responsibility for the survival of the community. The women gradually move into the background to make way for the men, who are led by the master dancers in order of age and excellence. The songs and dances take place around the musicians, who play in the center of the stage. The choreography is inspired essentially by hunting. The dance steps may imitate the movement of a hunting party through the forest, or even the animals themselves. The most accomplished dancers step out of the group and perform sequences of specific steps. Okay, that's the the tribe. That's about what they do. It's uh, fascinating. It's been the conservation of their culture as much as they can. Then we get back to the next slide is what we get to be, because when there's so much in terms of difference, diversity, there is always a discrimination in either form because you come from a different tribe, you could be seen differently by the older tribe. So it makes it uh, complicated and difficult. Sometimes some conflict still at this point on, in Cameroon, there's still a conflict now uh, based on the language in that tribe where uh, in West Coast and then uh, Northwest and then uh, Southwest of Cameroon where they speak English and the rest of the country speaking French. They feel discriminated. They feel that their voice is not being heard. So there is that uh, crisis, that fight, and then the civil war is still there at this, on these days. But the person, the only thing we come together is the animal uh, national totem, which is the lion. Uh, the lion here has a national uh, color of the country, and it's a very big emblematic for uh, the soccer team in that country that brings everybody together. And yes, here is the soccer team for girls. And there is that little lion on the side that's the protector. That's the one that's uh, get them to soar as much as they can. And the next slide will be the boys team where he's sitting there and the boys are ready to go. And they think the lion is in front of them and fighting for them to be able to get forward with the team and score as much as possible. Thank you so much for having this and thank you for setting this up, giving me the chance to share a little bit of my culture. Mm -hmm.